Hey paint and friends, welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to paint a blue pumpkin with white roses. Uh, I wanted to do something a little more neutral colors rather than the traditional fall colors, but have a autumn theme like with the pumpkin. So let's get painting our painting. And today we are going to paint a blue pumpkin. Now, as far as what I'm gonna put in the pumpkin, this prior practice piece, I did some roses. Now, I struggled with this design and this may not even be the finished product, but I just wanted to show you, I, wa I was inspired by the, vin what is it, the Jardin, Jard something, a vintage type pumpkin that was like a gray blue. Now this is more intense blue than what the actual pumpkin is, but that's what I was inspired by. And instead of the traditional fall colors, I just thought this would be neat for some fall decor in like a neutral home or what have you. Now the background, that was just something I had put down to cover over. This was a used um, piece. This was just a used canvas and I went over it with some color to reuse and practice this piece. So that's why it's that way. But we're gonna work on another, this was a used canvas. You can see the different colors. There was a blue in the background and I just went over it with a vintage white. And you may notice some lumps in it uh, from the paint. It was an old bottle. It had some lumps and bumps in it, but I didn't mind the texture. So you can go with the background that you desire. You can be smooth or it can have lumps. You could even do um, like a modeling paste to put a texture on your canvas if you wished. So that is the background. Now then I had taken my pattern, taped it down. I have a whole video on how to transfer patterns for painting. So that is where I got this. I didn't bother with the stem because we're gonna have a bouquet of something in it. I have thought of mums, and I may go ahead and do the roses just for the fun of it. But first we're gonna start with the pumpkin. Now I had gotten out several colors of blue. There's a medium blue and the light blue. I have some of this medium gray to tone it down a little bit and or to shadow with. Also, there's this, I don't know if you, silver marlin. If you can't get some of this, no worries. Don't worry about being exact in colors. In fact, you can make this a white pumpkin, a green pumpkin, pink pumpkin, whatever you desire. So I'm just showing you the colors that I'm gonna be using. Sometimes I get colors, uh, folk art used to send me colors to try. So I'm not sure if every one of these is available still from Plaid Folk Art. I'm pretty sure these colors, like the medium and light blue and the medium gray, I'm pretty sure those are still standard colors. But just so you know what's going on, here's another one that was um, I wouldn't have bought myself because it's so close to these other blues. It looks like light blue with a little more white in it. So um, that's another option. Titanium white, titanium white for highlighting, uh, whatever, lightening a color. Uh, thicket, thicket is one of my favorite greens. I also like sap green, but that thicket is a little, um, I don't wanna say browner, but it's a little more subdued color than the sap green. So here's the sap if I decide to use that. Classic green, one of my favorite, um, colors to use for the lighter side of the leaves is fresh foliage or citrus, depending on the look I'm going for. Now this is a little more subdued colors, so like uh, more, um, what they call neutral colors, or that's kind of the aim of this style. So I would probably stick with the fresh foliage rather than the citrus in this painting. Uh, or the classic green and lighten it with a little white or um, vintage white even. Okay, so that's the colors we're gonna start with. So I'm not worried about the background. I'm gonna bring in some background later, more background, or I may decide I like this blue peeking through this vintage white. We will just play with it as we go. 
and uh, it's not hard to put background color in later. And sometimes you want that effect, like on this one. And I may do this. I really like this Cafe Latte, which I did not show you that one. Cafe Latte as a base down here. And it's not like a straight line, like you know a table, it's just kind of mishmashed in there just to give it an overall, a darker look down here. Um, this could be anything. This is more of an impressionistic style than really a realistic style. So keep that in mind. Don't aim for perfection, just enjoy the process. So for the pumpkin itself, I will use a three quarter inch flat. Now this is, um, the main brushes I'm using are from my Donna Dewberry, not my Donna Dewberry, but you know, from the Donna Dewberry set that I often link to because I have found they work very, very well taken care of, they last a long, long time, and the price point is very doable for most people. And there's a variety of brushes in here. Mostly flat brushes. I learned how to paint with just flats and liners. Um, and that's really what I, I go back to many times. So the, I have tried others. I had, For some effects, I like filberts, uh, what have you. But those were the main brushes I started with. So if you're going to buy brushes, start with a, the set of flats from Donna Dewberry. Three quarter inch brush. Sorry for the shadows because I have to have light overhead. Anyway, so I'm going to dampen my brush as I always do. Dampen and then I just press it onto my towel that I always have to the side and just get the worst, not the worst, but a good portion. So it's just a damp brush, not a wet brush. And I just dripped water saying it was still too wet. So I just wiped it again. So there we have it, a damp brush. So we're going to start with some blues. I'm going to start with the light blue and I can bring in other blues. I'll put a touch of the gray down. So if I want to tone it down a little touch and um, let me see the blue. This is the silver Marlin. You can see it's got a lot of gray in it. Uh, my palette is kind of shiny. Sorry about that. And I'll do titanium white later. I'm just going to get the outline basically in. I'm loading my brush with the light blue. Work it in. And, you know, this back part we may not see much of, but I'm just filling in. Don't try to be perfect within the lines. They're just guidelines. So I start pretty much on the chisel edge. You flatten. Lift the pressure and twist your brush, and that makes that shape for that part. I've got a ridge of paint there. Since I can, I'll be able to see through it to create my uh, lines. So to differentiate, define, where the ribs of the pumpkin are. I'm get, going into the blue marlin. I could go into the gray instead and just lighten it. And right there is that line. So I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna drag the darker edge around. And if that's too dark for me, I just blend it. Blend it in. Blend it in. Nothing's written at stone at this part. You're just putting the undercoat in. Just the undercoat, getting it started. And just fill in. See how the marlin is a gray there and it's just a lighter really gray than this. So you could do to get this color you could mix this with the light blue probably just barely a touch of it with the light blue. Looks like I need to add more light blue to the palette. 
take some just a touch and mix it in and I'm showing you this because I want you to be able to kind of mix colors that are close if you don't have a color I have don't be afraid to mix some and get close get a color that's close enough and will work for you. Still a little bit more. You see how you're getting a gray? It's not quite the dark gray. There are lighter grays you can buy um, if you wished, but sometimes mixing. That way you have a limited amount of paint colors, but you really learn how to blend up some colors. Now it's not exactly the same as this and it doesn't matter. All I wanted was a shadow color. So that's a, a short lesson in some kind, some color mixing. And I'm just getting some of that on my brush. to create a darker color for bringing out those ribs. Now if you want a little bit more control, you can go with, let me just empty my brush out here, you can use a 12. Now we're not aiming for perfection, we're just trying to fill in with color. So I'm gonna put that aside and I'm gonna go for my number 12 flat. So I'm gonna do the same, dampen it, and then I just press it onto my towel. I have paper towels a lot of times, but a lot of, uh, I have old rags that, um, I used to have a cleaning business and I have lots of rags, so I use those instead of throwing away paper towels. So then we're just going to get the paint in there and you can see how you can just use it. Use the 12 and then you'll just have to make more strokes, but that's okay too. So right there was a rib. and it's very faint, you can see the line, that's fine. If you want to deepen it, go right ahead, but it doesn't mean a lot of acrylics um, dry darker than when you first lay them down. So just keep that in mind that that color will intensify as it dries. Now that rib or that gray, that's just way too much there, I'm just gonna go over it. over it it will come through because this is not totally opaque the color the blue so you'll get the shadowing you want without it being a stark harsh line so again get a little bit of the gray I'm going to go in the marlin. I like that marlin color. And I'm going to go along the edge of the rib with that color. Now when I blend in, I'm going to get some of the streaks of the darker color and that's fine. Anything you don't like, you can just go right back over it. Now, you'll want to let this dry 
because if you start keep working it while it's wet or to a, a, a specific or at a certain point, I should say, of it still being wet, it will start to lift and be very frustrating for you. So let it dry and you can go in and do another coat and then we'll add highlights, shadows, whatever we need. But at this point, we can just let it dry. So we'll take a quick break and then we will come back. Sometimes when you need to let an area dry, you can move to another area. Like we can put in some of the coffee latte down at the base. And I'm just gonna put some coffee latte out on my palette. And I'm gonna use the same number 12 flat brush, or you could, maybe I'll go with for better coverage quicker. I'll go with the three quarter inch. Now, I had it in water, still got some blue in it. I'm not worried about getting it perfectly clean. I'm just tapping it on my towel, pressing it on the towel to get the excess paint out. And then I'm just gonna go into my cafe latte and just add it in here. Slip slap, no rhyme or reason, not trying to be perfectly covered. I want some of the underneath color to show. I'll just bring it in close to the, to the pumpkin. Sometimes I'll wanna add maybe some more blue in there just to give it some interest. And just work it around. As I said, I'm not being perfect. This is getting a little dry. I will even might work some of that blue marlin in there. Don't worry if you don't get right up to the edge. You can come in later and add another coat or define it a little more, or you could have something at the base of your pumpkin, like some leaves or vines or something else. I'm not gonna worry about making that a perfectly straight line. And remember, less is more. So don't overwork it. And if you get some up on your pumpkin, don't worry about it. Alrighty, I think I want a little more blue marlin in there. Just work it up. Okay, there we have a bit of our cafe latte background. Looks pretty muddy on the screen from here, but trust me, it's not too bad. All right, now this is feeling pretty dry. So we will go back in with our blues. Where is, okay, so here's the light blue. And I'm gonna bring in some white too. So there's titanium white, you can use wicker white. And what I'm gonna do is just Uh, and you see the difference in blue between this and this? And that shows you how much it darkens as it dries. So just streak in some of the white. All I did was add a bit of white to that blue on that brush. And like at the base, I wanna add a little more depth. Like it's got a deep shadow right here at the base. A little more. And you see how it just blends in. There's no stark line. It just blends in because the blue that I put on top was a little bit wet. And if you get too far up with it, you can wipe your brush and pull that blue back down. If you lose your de definition, go back into one of the darker colors, and I mean the definition of the rib, and it bothers you, just 
bring it back in. Now I'm using the chisel edge rather than having a, just a double load on the brush on that one. So I still had some gray in that brush when I brought that white in. And that's okay. It just gives a little more definition and interest into your pumpkin. Now these edges have a little shadow. I want a little bit right here as well. Now you notice that I came down over the background color a little bit and that's perfectly fine. So I'm going back into, I wiped out any gray that was in my brush and I went back into the light blue and I pulled it in, pull it into my pumpkin. And right down there was kind of a thin spot on the pumpkin. Adding that blue in. Adding a touch of white to my brush. Blending that highlight in towards the top. Dragging it down to the fades away into the blue. And that's because that blue is wet. Still a bit wet. If you ever think it's too much, go back into the blue and drag it up. Drag it up. Okay. Just a hint of the darker down here. Wipe out my brush, go under the blue, and lighten that up. Okay, so we had finished putting on a little bit of the highlights with the blue, and you can see it's all it's all pretty much dry now, and. Um, I'm kind of liking the way it's looking. Now I did refer back to this one and you notice how it has a little bit more blue, darker blue rather than just the gray in the uh, ribs. And I kind of like that look. Um, so I was gonna go back in and I do believe that was a, just a barely a hint of Prussian blue. I mean, just the tiniest hint, excuse me. And I will get out some more of my light blue. Now you're not gonna do a bunch of lines. What I mean is we're gonna do hit and miss. So let's just load up with our light blue fully on the number 12 flat and get a hint of that deeper blue in there. And we're just gonna go along in some areas and just hit along the edge, just briefly, just a, just a touch, just to bring some of that blue in there. Very subtle. If you get too much, go in with the lighter blue and smooth it out, blend it in. You see how you're just adding that beautiful blue color. And I have to remind myself, less is more. Don't get too carried away. But I really like that. I like that beautiful blue, spark of blue in there. You can stop wherever you like or add just a hint more in areas. 
Okay, so we've got those, that little bit of that beautiful blue added in there. Going back with some more white. Didn't clean out my brush. I'll just wipe a little bit of that ex excess paint out. And then we're just going to add some little sparks of light. Now this isn't blended in as much as the other was. And I'm just doing it with the tip of my brush. In fact, I'm not going to load anymore. I'm just going to work it down from up in the ferrule. And you see there's still a little bit of blue in there. And you're just bringing up those highlights just a touch. Now some of this up here is going to be underneath the flowers that we put in here. So there we have our blue pumpkin. And now I def messed up that line there. So I'm wiping out my brush. I'll show you how I fix that. Wiped out the brush, got a little dampness in it. And let me pull that out. Pull that out where I went over that with white and I didn't want to. Got a little more blue in there so that I could bring that darker line back. Just touch it in there, barely, barely. There we go. Okay, so our pumpkin, not real. Yours will not look like mine. So just go with it. Be happy with what you do. And don't try to mimic mine exactly. We're going for an impression of something, not realism. So now the coffee latte, when I looked at my original, let me get some more out here. I thought, you know, this looks so dark. And then when I looked at my original practice piece, I'll bring it up here. You notice how it's much lighter? I had mixed white in with it and I liked that so much better. So we are going to go with, maybe I'll go with my uh, three quarter inch flat. Excuse me. Reach here. It was in my other water. Damp brush. Some coffee latte again. Touch of white. Brush, brush, brush. Liking it better already. So you're getting that hint of that coffee latte without it being so starkly dark. Just slip slap that in there, just like we did before. You can leave some of the gray blue showing. If you want it to be a little bit darker under the pumpkin, that's great. There we go, much better. That other was just much too dark for what I wanted. So there we go. There's our bit of a base. Can have a little bit lighter on one side, a little darker on the other. And we are all good now. I'm just using up that paint. Okay. We are good. Put that in over there and this is going to complete this segment and we will move on to our flowers placement next. I struggled with this composition so much and I could see what I did wrong. This rose should have been lower down and maybe tilted a little more this way. This one, um, I, I liked the placement of this one and this one was was pretty good too. And then this one, I think I should have faced it more upwards than that direction. And that one, um, I don't know, you probably can't see, but I had to face that way, that way. I just, I'm not even sure what I don't like about those up there. So let's get going and try it a little bit different. Um, as I said, I, I'm still not quite settled on what I want to do there. And these, I wasn't real thrilled with those things. And one thing about this, one thing about this is I want to lay out where I'm going to put my roses. 
Now I can use tapioca, this nice light, kind of a yellow, a ye creamy yellow white. It's a little darker than, I, than this background, I do believe. And I'm gonna go with my number 12 flat to just kind of lay out where I want my roses. So you don't want them on the same plane and I want some foliage beneath it, but I do want them to be constrained. I don't want them, you know, wider really than the pumpkin. So say we put one right here and maybe, do I want this one lower or do I want it higher than this one? Maybe we'll bring this one down a bit lower. That one lower, and we'll get this one down here too. And then we'll have the one in the center. It'll be on a little bit higher level. It's blending in a lot with that background, isn't it? Let me get a little more touch of yellow in. Hell, you can use, like I could have used one of the blues. That would have worked. But I'm just gonna get a little yellow out here. We're just using this as a placement holder. So I want this one, this one's gonna be down here. So you see how it's lower than this one. And this one's gonna be like over here. And then maybe One right here, smaller one. Stacking them just a little too well. I don't know that I'll like that, but I could always go over it with a different. Now these are not on the same plane. You see that one's up here and this one's down here. Okay, let's go with that. And then we can put the foliage in. So we'll work with that for the time being. And you can place yours wherever you like. On, your, on the screen on there, it's, these are much yellower than it's showing up for me. They're showing up much lighter. But we'll let that be. So the last we left off, we were, we blocked in where we were gonna put our flowers. I'm gonna go ahead and do roses on here. I had thought of doing some fall colored mums, but we'll stick with the roses. We could do the mums another time. Now I, on the original or the practice piece, I should say, I did the marlin, silver marlin as the darker color with the titanium white to make these kind of a grayish rose but I'm not sure that that's what exactly what I want to do. Um, I had thought of going with the yellow because I know it's going to be harder for people who are not used to doing these roses. You could also do the boho roses. I will put a link below on how to create the boho roses, which many people would find much easier than these stroke roses. But if you've done um, any of my stroke roses, these are just, with practice, as easy once you get it down. So let's go ahead and do that. You could put any flower in here that you wanted. Go back through my tutorials. You could do tulips. You could do iris. You could do, as here, the roses. You could even put fruit, like pears and apples in there, make it a real harvest-themed painting. So I'm, you know what, I'm gonna start with the smaller ones on top. And for that, I'm gonna do a number 10 flat brush and see if I have it here. Oh, it's over here. Now, when I cleaned my brushes and I have a whole tutorial on cleaning the brushes, I left some of the soap in here to, to shape. So I'm just going to rinse that out and that will help dampen my brush as well. And then I, I'll get a rag so I can, you can see what I'm doing. This is one of my paint rags. 
So after I rinse it, I dab it onto a towel. So the paintbrush is still moist, but there's not a ton of water coming out of it. So it's just damp. So I am going to load with mostly white. And then just a touch of the silver marlin. Now you could do this with the gray. You could do this with the blue. You could do this with a, a green. I want them to mostly be white. And you know, if I don't like these, I will go over them. So I'm gonna have this rose pointing that direction somewhat. And I'm just going to start with the back of the bowl of the rose. I go back and I reload, trying to get more white than the gray. Now you see the gray starts to creep over into the white and that does occur. And that's why I'm careful just to get a tiny bit on the corner of my brush. Just a touch and then work it in. So this is mostly white on the brush. I don't want it gloppy. So there's the inner bowl, outer bowl, and here's like the first arm of the armchair on each side. And then I do a little bit lower arm. Every single solitary rose you paint, stroke or otherwise, will be different. So I'm gonna go in here to the center and I could do a third layer or I could just bring this and leave this really an open, not a tightly closed. So I'm just gonna swish some of the silver marlin in the center. I'm gonna get some more of that white on there or work it in there. And then I'm going to bring, I'm gonna bring the bowl around. I'm, you can see I'm wiggling so it's not just a straight line and bring it up. And that's basically a U stroke. Now not every time do I do that. Sometimes I'll have a, another piece in the center. Sometimes I won't go all the way across. I will come down, but you'll see in my other roses. So now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna grab the tail end of the back bowl. And I'm gonna pull it down. And then I come down and across. And then I do the same on the other side. And I get this, catch it, down and across. And you notice how those, this one overlaps that stroke. Now some of that yellow in the back will come through, that's just fine. I'm not too worried about it. Now I'm gonna put a lower petal here. And you notice I'm not reloading with the silver marlin a lot. I'm just going with what's already here in the palette. I will grab a touch when I think it needs to be a little more. And then I'm gonna do another petal there and another little petal there. Sometimes those bottom petals will be larger. Sometimes they'll be smaller. Sometimes you can skip them completely. So I'm gonna do, there's the outer arm and I'm gonna go inside of that right up against to that bowl and pull it down. That's a wiggly comma stroke. And then I'll do that from this side. I'm trying to keep my brush out of your camera view. So I'm at an odd angle, but there, wiggle, 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 and then pull it. Reload. And I go underneath this one and over top of that bottom arm. See, this one has a lot more blue in it when I go the other direction. I did not load any more blue. And I'm gonna go between these two petals and I'm gonna pull chisel edge, press as I twist my brush and come up between those two petals. And then I'll just add some chisel strokes as I think it needs it. Just some little strokes here and there. And there's my upper rows.
So I'm going to do this one. This one I will have either paint, I think I'll have it pointing more upwards rather than too much to that direction. Just have it pointing upwards. Now you can do these any way you like. So I'm just going to make the back, back outer bowl. Bring in the inner bowl. And then I'll start the armchair arms. As I said, no two roses will ever be exactly alike. I'm kind of looking at it. Okay, I'll just do the inner bowl, complete inner bowl. And then I will bring this one down. I did not attach it over there yet. Now this, oops, I loaded my brush wrong. That happens. I just wiped it out on my towels. All I did. Just so that I could reload it properly. So I'll catch this side of that inner bowl, second layer bowl. And you know how you notice this one I didn't come all the way across. That one I came all the way across. This one has this third petal or bowl section in the center. So that's how this one is different than that one. It has a little bit tighter center. So then I still have to attach the outer bowl or back bowl. And I just do the same. I'm just going to overlap. Now I didn't overlap at the same section. You see this one overlaps up here. This one overlaps down here because it's different petals. And you just keep layering your rows. So here I'll add that little section. And whatever you don't look at, if I don't like the bottom of my rows, I, I'm probably going to have a leaf come up and overlap it from underneath this rose. And that just gives it a layered look because bouquets are not just flowers stuck in random places. It's layered with foliage, etc. So fix that one a little bit more. There's just kind of a small little petal stroke. So I'm going to go over top of this arm with the arm on top. And if later, if I think that's too blue, I will come back with just white and really touch up the edges so that white will really stand out in spots, especially. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the chisel edge stroke where it comes between these two petals. Sometimes I do it from up there, but I'm going to do it from between these petals. Stroke on the chisel edge, flatten, twist your brush, and come up underneath that stroke. And again, add in wherever you think it needs some little chisels, little strokes to mimic small little petals here and there. And just bring it up. So. Now you notice this one is nowhere near that one. They're not the same at all. And that is what you want. You want the roses to be different. Okay, so now I will want to put leaves in. Like if I have a leaf coming from underneath this rose, I want it to come do it now. And that way when I paint this rose, it will overlap it and the leaf will be tucked underneath. So I will take a break. I will put out my greens for my leaves and we'll come back and we'll put in some leaf leaves. You may have noticed that when we came back after we blocked in where the roses were going to go, that 
these little green patches were here. These are a very dark green. What I had mixed thicket with a little touch of Prussia blue because I wanted some deep dark greens around the roses and underneath the roses. And I was just testing that out to see how dark it would dry. So over here on my palette, I didn't do the Prussian blue. I mixed the thicket with a touch of black, just a tiny touch of black. And that is just so I could bring in some very dark green just to set these in down at the base. Now, you don't have to do that. It was just, to, I was just testing a little bit and you can see how that black really takes over um, as far as the green color goes. But when it dries, you'll see there's green in it. And I think looking at it, I do prefer the Prussian blue mixed in. But what I wanted to do was, so we're gonna do it with a number 12 flat. Let me see, is this the 12? No, that's a 10. We are gonna go in and let me dampen my brush and dry it out. We're gonna go in and we're gonna put in some leaves. I have thicket here and fresh foliage here. Many times I'll use thicket green, uh, not thicket, but um, citrus. And I have in the past used like a Wedgwood color, which is really a muted green that's um, just like a light sage. But I think this will work. I put out some classic green to see if I could use that too with the thicket for some of the leaves. Now, underneath the roses, I will um, put some larger leaves and some smaller leaves. I'm gonna start with some scallop leaves. And like right up here underneath this rose, I was trying to remember where I was putting it completely. I will put some scallop leaves that will come up over this rose. And that just sets that rose kind of back. And I can and probably will go over some of these uh, leaves again because you see how it's not quite opaque. So I'll just put in, I could just go in and put a base of the darker green and then come back over with the double load. But I'm double loading my brush with the two greens. It's a number 12 flat. And then I'm just deciding where I'm going to put these leaves. Now you could just do a regular leaf. You don't even have to do like the wiggle. You just push your brush out and let it come up. Oh, I usually do the light against the dark. That's not what I meant to do. So let me reload and do. Yeah, I'm not getting the definition that I want. So I will come back and go over that. Well, well there I go, just smear it, but that's okay. We will cover that with something. So I'm gonna go in just with the classic green first and put in where I'm gonna have some of the larger leaves. And I will also put in some like vines and then some just slider leaves. Here and there. And do I want? You can turn your piece whenever you feel like you need to. Yes, I'm going over that dark green there, but it will deepen the color right there along the edges. And you know, you could decide that you don't like that black in there. So you, you go back into some of the other greens and you just touch it up, go over it. Okay, now I'm really just undercoating some of these leaves because they were not coming out as opaque as I would have liked.
I don't want to be matchy matchy where I did that one. I could do like a scrolly vine. There. And maybe a leaf coming off over here. Remember being that's the undercoat doesn't have to be perfect. Up in here, I'm not sure what I could put in there. So I could put in some filler flowers, uh, hydrangeas are super easy, um, and something like that. I could even do a hydrangeas that are this color, and then it would just kind of all blend together and be some soft, neutral colors. So the hydrangeas are so, so easy that basically, I would come in, you could come in with the marlin, but I don't think I want the marlin. I would come in with a medium blue. I don't think we used the medium blue on the pumpkin, but that's okay. Now where's my light blue? And light blue. Well, first we'll start with a little bit of the medium blue. And we'll just put in some soft little strokes. Now, um, hydrangeas are not perfectly round, and you're going to get the indication of the hydrangeas. So, just doing some padding here and there, strokes, with that medium blue, right? That's what I used, medium blue. Now I did a um, rain boots with hydrangeas and roses it last fall, was it? And um, I have other hydrangeas. I did hydrangeas in a terracotta pot. And all sorts of fun type hydrangea flowers. And one thing about it, hydrangeas come in such a range of colors. They even have the, some that have the green undertone. All right, so now we'll go with the light blue and probably some white. And I'm just going to tap in. And maybe I'll go with the number 10 flat for this. And we'll just go on top of those. And I'm making like three strokes. Together, almost in a T shape. And you can finish a couple with a couple slider strokes underneath. You want some of the darker blue to show through. Whoops, reloaded it wrong. Now you could come in with just the white if you wanted and it would have the blue under tone. I'm just, I am winging it really. I had no set design plans here. I just knew I wanted it to be different as far as color choices with a fall painting. This is more, I would say, more go with neutral decor than the traditional oranges and yellows. I do love the bright, saturated colors of fall with the oranges and 
reds, and we'll do something like that too. Okay, it's all good. We'll come and dot the centers later, but I think those are gonna make great filler flowers. So now we're gonna go down to our lower roses, and no, we won't because I've gotta do some more. Yes, a lot of the leaves are dried enough to go over them now. So now I'm gonna load with the two colors of Thicket and Fresh Foliage. And I'm gonna go over the Classic Green. I do not have to cover completely. I don't have to make sure I have all of the Classic Green covered. It's just gonna give it a lot of dimension if you just let it shine through. And as I said before, you do not have to do a stroke leaf. You could just paint in a leaf, like, you know, pull the colors together. And if you want to bring in the seam, just bring in a seam. Just play around with it. You could even paint leaves. I mean, just, no, I'll do another one. Just pull your brush down and make that shape of a leaf. I didn't get the tip done. If your paint starts to get thick, rinse your brush and come back and do it. And if you make one wrong, go right back over it or one you don't like. You don't like the shape of it or what have you. Just have fun. We're not aiming for perfection. This is an impression of something. This is not realism. This is just fun painting. I gotta rinse my brush out. It's getting a little gloppy. And that just cleans it up a bit. And I load more. Load more into my brush. Now, if you notice when I do my leaves, I do the dark to the outside and then I do the dark to the inside. So the dark is next to the light. You could do it the other way where you have the dark next to the dark and some people do and that works too. But this is just like how I, I just like it. It makes the seam already for you. When you do the little bit of a wiggle, it kind of makes it look like it's the veining. And if you wanted to come back with a nice fine liner and then add the veining, that works too. Let's just go back over this leaf and this leaf and this leaf. And you notice mine are not perfect. They're raggedy edged. They're, you know, a little messy. That's great because you want it to be a little bit different. And leaves are not always perfect. So we're almost done with our leaves. Here, let me get this one so I get this one over here. All right, so we've got the bunch of leaves here. I look at it, what does it need? Maybe it needs like a vine and just another leaf. Could be even a big leaf. Notice how it went down and like this. Get some darker green, add it in there. Nothing perfect. I got two ends, here we go. That all works. Okay, rinsed out my brush. And now we're gonna go back in. I need to get some more white. We're gonna do our next roses. So, I still have the silver marlin there. Here's a fresh puddle of white. 
I'm going to fill the brush quite a bit across, get a touch of the silver marlin. And we'll start with this one. We'll start with this one. I didn't do that one, but I'm not going to worry about it. So I want the, out, the outside to be white. I want this one definitely to be taller than the rest. And I'm going to need to undercoat with white over top of the other flowers to get the opacity that I want. So I should have thought of that. So I'm just going to pull up some white. And you see where that one is? I'm going to go over it with white. I'll do the same here, right there where it's going to go over those flowers. And that leaf. And this one where it's going to go over the flowers and the leaves. It doesn't have to be perfectly opaque, the white, but it does have to help with the coverage just so you're not having that peeking, glaring through too much. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. And in the interim, we could do some small leaves coming out from behind the upper roses. And I'm not too worried. These are just going to be little stroke roses or a little slider. What am I saying? Slider leaves, not roses. Don't drag them out too long. I got too long of a tip on that one to my liking. But and just add a few here and there. Yep, it's looking good. Looking good indeed. This one, I think, needs to come up over that. So, we'll just add that in there. So, we'll let this white dry so that it won't be picked up when we do the next layers of that rose. We want the roses. These are like, this is like the star of the show rose. And even though those are kind of like uh, background singers, um, we do want these to be a little more appealing or I don't, I don't want to say perfection. I never go for perfection, but I do want them to be right. So I was trying to think, what could I do while that was drying? Because when I sit down to paint, I just want to sit down and paint and not have to wait for things. So you move around the canvas. Now I was I got out some burnt umber and I'm going to shade down underneath so it settles that in. Now I think I will use my three quarter inch brush and I'm just going to work the soap out of it that I had left in it, the brush soap, and then I'm going to dry it out. So I can use a glazing medium, which many, many times I do like to use glazing medium or floating medium. You could also use water. I just got some glazing medium here. And I work one side of the brush into it and then I get a little bit of the burnt umber. And then I just work that in, and then I just brush just a little bit, and you deepen the shadow underneath the pumpkin. Now you could pull it out further. I've got kind of a lot of glazing medium there. And you really set it down in there. Now if you had a shadow, I have no light direction in this, and that's okay. 
um, like the light coming this way or this way. So we're just going to pretend it's coming straight down. So this is going to be shadowed underneath quite a bit of it. And you just have it kind of fade off up there. And this kind of sets your pumpkin back in there. Seats it down in there. And you can deepen it if you wish. Like in a certain section, bring it down a little further. Leave it just right up against the pumpkin, what have you. So there, we've gotten that shadowed down there. Just fine and dandy. So let's feel, okay, this rose feels like it can be painted on now. That white is dry enough, let's hope. So I have my brush loading it with the two colors. Remember, mostly white, touch of that silver marlin. And then we'll start our rows. Big back bowl for this one. Reload and do the second bowl. And we'll do some of the arms, the armchair arms. Now that one had more gray than I wanted, so I added more white and went over it. I shouldn't say gray, it's silver marlin, but it is to me, it's a, a gray with a lot of blue in it. Next layers, next arms down. Sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller. Here, I'll get that lower petal painted in there. I didn't bother adding one over there, I didn't need it. So, here, that center. I think I want it to be a little wider, so I'm going to just fill in with more of the blue. Not too much, because we can have some of the yellow come through. You notice some roses do have yellow in the center. And then we'll just wiggle it and bring it across. And we'll catch the secondary layer. Part of the bowl, and then the very back. Now this one, whoops, I got a little bit much there. Looks like it might be a little wonky, but that's okay. In the overall, it's not going to stand out. And then I start the secondary arms, or the second layer of arms. I don't always do this stroke here. I might have said that before, but sometimes it just fills in very well as far as cupping that center bowl. So we'll let that one be. Rinse out the brush because it was starting to get gloppy. I'm going to go... Sorry friends, my camera had timed out on me before I got to these two roses. And um, I didn't video that, but the roses, the putting them together was basically the same. You will notice that I did a tighter center on this one. And basically what I came in with was once I did the back bowl and then the secondary bowl, and then I did a small center and then I just closed it up rather than leaving it more open like those. So it just made that one uh, a little bit different than the others, a little more closed up. But basically the rest of it was the same. This one did not get this stroke where it came across the front. And this one I may do again. You notice how it's not quite opaque here. But this one, 
Uh, it was pretty much closed up here and I just added a few more strokes. And I may come in, I should, should say may, I will come in and I will give a bit more white on there. Let me get my brush dampened and rinsed. Dampened, rinsed, and then dried out. So it's moist, but not wet. And I'm gonna bring in, get some more white, work it into my brush. And then I'm just gonna come along to areas I think need a touch more white to bring the white or the brightness of the white up, especially over dark areas. And even with the background or the, um, I shouldn't say background painting, but under painting, some of it's the darker is showing through. In some areas I don't mind, in others I do want the opacity to be there. So like up here, I'm just gonna touch some more white along that upper rim, especially now that that's so dry, dried off. But you notice how I'm just bringing that lightness up just a touch. And the same here, like this one, look how uh, transparent that one is. I want to give it a little more opacity just around the outer edge. And then right in here, I'm going to just give it an extra touch of white. Just bring that color up just a touch. in different areas. These are very ethereal roses. Very light. Keeps them more neutral. Right here in the center, I want this one to be, have a lot more brightness. Just stick my hand in the other one. And you can decide where you want to add just a touch more color or the white. Okay, we're going to leave those be now. You notice this one, I made a much larger rose. I did this with a number 12, I did this with a number 12. And it's just how big you make your strokes is the difference. So practice your roses. I have several rows. I have a pink rose tutorial, I have a yellow rose tutorial. So practice, 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 and don't expect your roses to match mine. That's not the intent. It is just to teach you how to structure one and create your own style. I learned from several different uh, instructors via books and videos and then I eventually came up with my own style mixing all of those styles. I had Priscilla Hauser, Donna Dewberry, um, Ross Stalkup, Stalkup, all of those. I uh, learned, practiced, etc. So that is how I learned. Now um, this hydrangea, I want it to come over a little bit over this bottom petal of this rose and we had used the two blues. We had used the medium blue and the light blue. I'll start with the medium blue. I'm just going to put in a little bit more right there. And I like how that sets that rose back in the background, just a touch. And then a little bit of, well, I could probably mix white with this blue and get the light blue. A light enough blue to suit me. So I'll just add a few of the lighter blue on top and call it good. 
Now on this one, I want it to be a little darker here, so it kind of looks like it's behind or being shaded by this rose. So I'm just going to go into a little bit more of the darker blue and to bring a few, pat in a few of the darker strokes right along that edge. And the same here, just right along where the rose meets the hydrangea. And that just gives it a little depth. A little depth and brings it back. I was careful not to overlap the rows too much. A little bit got on there, but that's okay. Don't fret about being perfect. All right. So basically, we've got our roses in. We've got our hydrangeas in. We can go in and dot the centers of our hydrangeas. Now, a lot of times I'll use a stylus. Uh, or uh, the tip of a pen or a liner brush and I guess I'll go for the liner since I have it and I need to decide I could go in with greens I could go in with the white or I could go in with a darker color I'm going to try this medium blue and see what I think about it as far as dotting the centers no it's not it's not pulling up that color so I will use a fresh foliage as the dotting color and I wanted to use a color that is um, part of the overall in the overall design so that brings harmony in to the design where you're using just a few of the same colors I could have done them with white Remember, less is more. We don't have to dot all of them. I'm just putting like three little dots in the center. You could do one. But I notice my hydrangeas, they have like three or four little dots in the center of the little petals, the flowers coming together. Now I can wait on the darker blue so it doesn't meld in, but I just went and did it just to see how it would look. Same here, a few little dots. And I get lazy and I get doing them too big and too fast, so I need to slow down, take your time, just dot in there. You don't have to dot every single one, as I said before. Kind of gives more of an indication of where the blooms are since we didn't really define them. These are just impressionistic type blooms and that's what we want. Just an indication of everything. So I'm kind of liking that these are not quite opaque. They're just kind of blending in and we have to decide on what kind of a background we really want. Um, back there we could stay with the vintage white. I could come in with, uh, this is parchment, and I can test a bit of the parchment to see what I think of that color with my, where did I set my number 12 brush? Oh there it is. See what I think. Because, you know, it's such a neutral color. Whoops, I got a little bit in the green. Oh, kind of like that with the hint of green in it. Just see what that color looks like. Put a little white in it, make it mottled. We don't want it like just a solid, I don't anyways in this one, just a solid color. I'm rather liking that with that touch of green in it. So I can go some more and see about over here, putting some parchment in, getting a touch of that green in there, just to give it some mottled background. You could also come in and fly spec, which that always adds some interest as well. Just bring in I'm touching in the titanium white here and there just to give it a little more 
modeling effect. Just kind of pat it in there. Pat, pat, pat. I am liking that. So this is a good background. It keeps it neutral. A little touch of the green in there. Keeps it from being too bland. Go around the edges of your canvas. I didn't do that on all of it, but I will go back now and make sure that I do that. I'm going to have to get some more color out onto the palette. Just a touch. And you blend it down into this color down here. Just to kind of fade it together. Okay, there we have our pumpkin bouquet, blue pu pumpkin blue bouquet with roses, white roses. So um, I'm going to come underneath these leaves just a touch with some, you could do this with gray. I loved a color that they used to have and it was called green umber. They no longer have green umber which makes me sad. So I can mix something similar, um, I do believe, with Thicket and Burnt Umber. And let me see if I can get that color mixed up here. If not, you can just shadow underneath the leaves with Burnt Umber, a glaze like I did in the earlier down here beneath the pumpkin. I'm gonna get my lid back on my thing. So I'm going to mostly thicket, a lot of thicket, well, it's kind of, I would say, half and half. So I need my, I should have mixed it with my palette knife, get the paint out of the brush with the palette knife and kind of scoop it up into an area. So it looks kind of a green umber color. Let me rinse out my brush. I'm going to get some of the um, glazing medium and uh, bring some shadow underneath the, the little leaves on the pumpkin and around the pumpkin. This is totally optional. You don't have to do this. You could call it done. But I want to add just a bit of shading underneath some of the leaves. Uh, it's a little dark for my taste, so I'm going to pull it up and make it a little more transparent. I'm trying to find my glazing medium. Okay. Now I'm going to work it out more. Work it out, work it out, pull it over here to the side, and lighten it up much better. And you don't have to even do all of them, just some areas. And that's just how I do it. There's no rhyme or reason to a lot of what I do. I don't follow rules. I just enjoy myself. Just a hint of color. Uh-oh, got in the blue. Don't know how I did that. 
probably because I was up there. Okay, a little bit more. Especially up here where these leaves are coming together. You notice I haven't reloaded my brush. I just kept going. Just kept going. Put some depth of color underneath there. And there you have that. Now if I want a few tendrils, which I may, which I will, I don't know why I say may when I mean I will. I'm going to bring in, I think Thicket. Thicket's a good color for some tendrils. And, and what I mean by tendrils is like some streaks that create like a grassy effect. So I'm going to load. This is a Zero Royal Majestic 4585 brush. Liner brush. I like because I can get a nice skinny line. I have a tendency to be heavy handed so the larger ones like the number two I get the vines just a little wider than I really want so just I let it carry the paint try to make it inky so it'll flow well Keep it, you could do just some tendrils like that. Just a few, give it a little airiness. You can put some inside, go over different things. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to add vining to some of your leaves, you could do that. Veining, I should say, not vining. And I'm looking, looking at where I could possibly add some more just tendrils. Less is more. So take it easy with your, don't get carried away. Sometimes I do get it a touch carried away. And there you have it. Now this leaf here didn't have any scrollies. Remember I said some of them you don't want to, if you don't want to make it. Yeah, I got that too wide. I don't like that. Don't be afraid to remove it. There we go. So you see how you can do the veining later on. And these leaves are not quite opaque. I'm going to leave them. I'm not, I want to have interesting differentiations between them all. Oh, and there you have your blue pumpkin with white roses and blue hydrangeas. Feel free to change the colors. I said that before in on any part of this painting and make it your own. Don't forget to sign it. I prefer signing with a pen. I'm not great with a brush, so I use um, paint pens a lot of times to sign my work. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.